Also in the US, there is currently debate over whether or not to ban TikTok in the country. Yes, it's that social media app that's taken the world by storm, but concerned many security experts because it is ultimately China-owned. Joining me live now is Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security, Labor MP Peter Khalil, the chair of that committee, no less. Morning. I should mention that as well. What do you make of this at the moment? Well, it is a very topical issue, Tom, for a lot of important reasons because of the national security and national interest implications. And the government is taking a considered, deliberate approach to how we go about uh, regulating uh, social media digital platforms and how they are accessed and how uh, consumer information is stored. There is a, a review that has been commissioned by the Minister for Home Affairs and that's landed, I think, and, and she's considering the recommendations that come out of that. I don't want to preempt the, the Minister's announcements about what uh, the government uh, decisions will be around uh, regulation, but I would I would say that the review is very broad. It looks at all the national security implications around, um, you know, multiple national security risks, if you like, as well as uh, other uh, implications around social media platforms, mm. um, and that's really important. And I just wanted to point out too, this is not a new thing, by the way, Tom. You know, I think TikTok was launched back in 2016, so the previous government had a fair bit of time to look at this. There were a number of reports and so on uh, internally, I think. But, um, you know, we're, we're looking at this very seriously. And uh, as I said, the minister will be uh, making, some, uh, making some announcements around uh, reform. Would it be unprecedented to totally ban an app purely on privacy reasons, essentially? Um, well, look, obviously uh, some government departments have already instructed their staff yeah, and there to, would be to do that. Plenty, and then right? I think even Twitter and Facebook, there are concerns around how they yeah, operate. Yeah. But I'm talking about for the wider uh, Well, population. ultimately the difference, sorry, just on that point, the difference yeah. between those apps that you mentioned where there is a commercial imperative versus an app that's sort of state-owned, I guess, is, is where some of the concern lies. But... Um, uh, look, the, the decisions that the government, again, without preempting the government's decisions on this, they're looking at where the, impl you know, the implications on our national security are. Broadly speaking, whichever social media app it is, the, the hoovering up of data and personal information is a privacy issue. It's a, it's a real issue. The, the use of that data by whoever's got it to influence populations, almost population-wide uh, okay. influencing, yeah. uh, disinformation, misinformation, um, the ability to actually... I think there was a report uh, around... Uh, uh, with TikTok in the US, because it's before uh, Congress, there was there was reporting around the fact that some journalists uh, had their... were geo, their, you know, being tracked through, through the app Critical of TikTok, well. apparently, the journalists. Any journalists, then, so be careful. If you're critical, you might get followed around. But so that, that is... Yeah, TikTok. Yeah, well, that is a real concern. So the way that those, um, those technologies are used is something that we're looking at very, okay. very seriously. So would it be the right approach if... Because you can't sort of sit there as a government and take an app-by-app app approach. But is the right approach setting out parameters for how apps need to or, or need to avoid doing in Australia? Yeah, I, I think... You're, is, is that what you're looking at? Is I think you're right about... I think you're instinctively right about that. You need, I think, regulation and, and legislative um, frameworks need to look at apps, not app by app, but certainly look at mm. social media platforms, How it shares platforms. things, whether it feeds information yep. back to yep. any government. Yep. So this wouldn't be a China thing, but if... It could be brought. shares information, yep. whether it is to a government or can do, whatever yep. it might be. It's the way that information is used, the way that it is um, manipulated, the way that it might be um, added, you know, algorithms are used on it. And what it gets as well. And what, what it's used going back the other way. I've tried to explain this to a lot of people where, you know, I'm like, you know, your, your dancing cat video on TikTok might not seem, you know, that serious, but... What we're talking about is all of that data, the personal information, the behavioural patterns that, that are tracked in the way you use the app and, and the information that you, you provide as well. Yep. That's all hoovered up and then algorithms are, are used to then try and, um, you know, uh, influence behaviours back the other way. So that, that's a concern. So, so can the Australian people then expect the government to set parameters around how apps need to work in Australia? 
Is that where we're headed? Well, simply? there's always the balance with, 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 you know, the individual's right and privacy to use whatever, um, you know, I understand that. And you whatever, can, you're versus not going the to, collective. Yeah, the so collective. you're not going to be overly yeah. strident and go, no. well, look, if you want to um, let them hoover up stuff, sure, but there's a, there's a, a red line, if you like. Is the, that where the, we're you know, it's not as simple as that, but it's similar to what you're saying because there are obviously national security implications and, and implications around social cohesion. But again, getting that balance right, I think, is a critically important thing and that there will okay. be a debate about that.